I first noticed her at UC at a, at a shoe shine, uh, which is like a, a cleanup thing, charity type thing that, that we used to do for our program. And uh, that's where I noticed her. I can tell you what I wore. <laughs> I can tell you that I met a funny guy there, but I didn't know it was Jason. Afterwards, we're cleaning our sections, and the guy was just being goofy. I was being goofy. I wasn't flirting, at least I don't think, <laughs> think I was. Days go by, months go by. You know, I, I never really made like huge passes at her or anything. I just noticed her. Thought she was cute. And eventually, she gets put in front of me again at, at a high school that we were doing rotations at. I was leaving high school and she was going to it. And uh, I had to show her around the campus. So it was just like our paths crossed. And then I went off on the senior internship and I come back and she moved across the street from us. It was diagonally across the street from Jason. All the Lindsay one night, late night, comes storming in the room and says, Dad, said there's sparks flying in the room. Sparks flying. And uh, I get up, go over in the other room. Hey, there's Jason. She said, no, Dad, it's the ceiling. And light. Literally. Literally sparks. But we're never reminded about well, you know, he's got that perfect thing. Jason was driving the big black truck that he had at the time with the tinted windows, and I was sitting in Jeremy's little Prius, <laughs> um, minding my own little business, ready to, to pull out and go on, and this big black truck rolls its window down and goes, Howdy, neighbor! And I see a smile, and I was like, Oh, no. <laughs> Eventually I graduated and I moved out of my parents' house and I continued on thinking nothing more of the situation. And then once again, you were placed in front of me. You messaged me. And our program director used our UC Rehab Cats Facebook page to comment on Jason's transformation photo. Congrats. And I took a screenshot of it. <laughs> And I sent it straight to Jason, and I said, you have to be laughing about this. We bonded over some comments that were made on a photo I posted about weight loss. <laughs> I found it all. <laughs> Jason and I have known each other for a long time. Uh, about 20 years, in fact. During that time, we've been classmates, teammates, roommates, and soulmates. <laughs> I'm just kidding, Lindsay, he's all yours. Although we are not blood, I've literally watched you grow up. From the funny and sometimes slightly annoying teenager to the stunning woman you are here today. I've seen you at your worst, but also at your best, like graduating high school and college, getting engaged and getting married here today. I am so proud of all of your accomplishments. I look forward to all the memories we will continue to make over the years to come. <laughs> I thought you were going to be dressed up in something. <laughs> Our first date was over at Mark and Cheryl's house. Believe it or not, it was a UC basketball game. It was UC versus Kansas State. On our first date, you didn't kiss me, which I loved. Because uh, I feel like first date, you know, you don't want you don't want to push boundaries too much.
Hi, baby. Hi, baby. Hi. You look great. Mm -hmm. You look great. No, you look good. No, you look better. <laughs> Quit. Uh, Took you less time to look good. Mm, I was waiting. Yeah. I was waiting. Mm -hmm. I always make it big. <laughs> and I have something for you guys to open here. <laughs> Boop. Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Practice. <laughs> yeah. Excited. Reverse. Reverse. <laughs> well, I'll take those and I'll I will do one of them with you. How about that? When I was little, I thought love was about red roses and expensive dinners. Truth is, love is waking up at 4 a.m. to you snoring and refraining from shoving you off the bed. <laughs> it's talking in accents just to make each other laugh, trying to embarrass one another in public. It's going on adventures and making fun of each other. Love is stumbling through life with your best friend. And you are my best friend. You are the best part. Oh, everything I do is just so I can be with you. You are my whole heart. Laying next to you is my wildest dream come true. You're the best part. Oh, you're the best part. I can't chug this. I can't. No, she can't. No, she can't. I can't. <laughs> I can't chug, I'm just telling you. I don't got it. It's okay. I vow to never be too busy to make time for being goofy and spend quality time with you and never drift too far into despair. Lastly, I vow to always see you for you. The E to my E off. The Beep. to my boot. <laughs> An amazing woman. In a few moments, my wife, Lynn, apostrophe C. Yeah. We took a second trip down to Asheville and we were supposed to do it on top of a mountaintop and uh, she didn't bring a hoodie. So we went to the Biltmore Estate, which is the largest house in America. It's gorgeous. We had a winery. I knew it was going to happen. <laughs> so I dressed up. I looked good. He did it right on top of the veranda where they have like um, a vineyard thing that kind of comes up some of the metal trellises and over the roof. And so I had to improvise and we made it work and it was good. And she said yes. Actually, she said, About damn time. <laughs> <laughs> I promise to put your happiness before mine. I promise to hold off watching the next episode of whichever show we're into until we can watch it together. <laughs> I, I know you will, that's why they're in there. <laughs> I just want you to know how much I've enjoyed annoying you all this time <laughs> and how excited I am to keep doing it in the future. <laughs> to whatever's end, I choose you in a hundred lifetimes, in a hundred worlds, 
in any version of reality, I would find you and I'd choose you.